Listen as Palm Beach County State Attorney David Ehrenberg talks about the Brian Laundry case. And what we know so far, many in the public are wondering why hasn't Brian Laundry been charged with a more serious uh, charge in the disappearance and death of Gabby at this point? Well, good evening, Marnie. I think that's coming, but there's always a tension in situations like this between police and prosecutors. There's a lot of pressure on police to find Brian Laundry and to arrest him. But prosecutors have to meet a higher burden. See, for police to arrest, they just need probable cause. That's not that high of a burden. But for prosecutors, we need to prove cases beyond any reasonable doubt. So we're always telling police in situations like this to hold off on making the arrest. That's why you have this lesser count. That's an easy one to prove and that can keep him in custody after he's found. But remember, prosecutors not only have a higher burden, but we have rules like if we don't file charges within 30 days of the arrest, then the guy goes free without any conditions until his trial. Also, we have speedy trial rules that say that we've got to try the case in 180 days, at least here in Florida, which is why prosecutors aren't rushing to file charges yet. I understand. So are you surprised a cause of death hasn't been pub publicly released yet for Gabby? Well, you know, they may want to keep that a secret until they're able to talk to Brian and family and others who may have information because it's something that that investigators may use where they know the cause of death and they may try to get a witness or Brian himself to say, no, I didn't strangle her. And then all of a sudden, how'd you know she was strangled? So that may not be information that they want to be let out to the public yet, but at least they have ruled it a homicide. There were five options for the medical examiner. It could have been natural causes, accident, suicide, homicide, or undetermined. The fact that they ruled it a homicide is the one choice that's good for prosecutors. David, as you know, the court of public opinion is very different than the court of law. Help us distinguish between the two when it comes to the parents' legal rights at this point, and are they protected under Florida law? Well, Marty, the parents of Brian Laundry. They have done everything possible to incriminate themselves in the court of public opinion. But in the court of the law, that is different because under the law, to be charged as an accessory after the fact, you need to know that Brian committed a crime and then you have to do something to prevent his punishment or his arrest. So for example, if they sanitize the van, now that'll get him hooked for a crime. If they hid evidence, if they bought him a plane ticket to get out of town because they knew he was involved in a crime, then you would see prosecutors getting ready to file charges right away. But we don't have that evidence yet. Right now, we know that they, the parents remain silent, they lawyered up, and that in itself is not a crime. In fact, the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination applies to the parents and Brian, and it can't be used against them in a court of law. Even though everybody uh, wants to hear from them, they have that right to remain silent. Uh, Brian Laundry certainly doesn't want to be found at this point. In your experience as a prosecutor, is flight evidence of guilt? It's uh, consciousness of guilt, and you can use that at the trial. So even though Brian Laundry has the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, at trial, his flight can come back to haunt him because the prosecutors can point to that. In fact, it's even in some jury instructions. It says that if you flee, that is consciousness of guilt and jurors hate it when defendants flee. But his silence in itself is not gonna be used against him unless he tries to explain that, well, Gabby just walked off and someone else killed her or she committed suicide or it was an accident. Well, then if he takes a stand and says that, the prosecutors can say, really, who'd you call afterwards? Did you report her missing? Did you say anything to anyone? And that's where his silence can also hurt him. Really interesting. David Ehrenberg, appreciate your time tonight and your insight. Thank you. Thanks for having me.